Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Salina High School, where tonight, in a key WBL matchup, the Salina Bulldogs welcome in the Defiance Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. Tonight's pregame is sponsored by the State Bank. For all your banking and financial service needs, visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Gilly, we take a look at both these teams. They come in just a lot of firepower. Defiance comes in averaging 31 points a game. Salina comes in at 29 points a game. Salina's sitting atop the WBL. Salina's sitting atop the WBL. A win tonight is going to at least get them a clinch of the title. And if you're the Defiance Bulldogs, you've got to look at it for points. For computer wise, and also you can play the spoiler role. Let's take a look at the keys for our game tonight, Gilly. The Defiance Bulldogs, they come in at 6 and 2, 5 and 2 in the WBL. Got to win tonight to stay in the race. Got to win tonight, stay in the race. You got to play your game. You got to make sure that you're ready and prepared for what Salina will throw at you. Salina is very physical, especially up front and in the trenches, and very athletic in the perimeter positions. We take a look at the homestanding Bulldogs. They come in at 7-1, seven 7-0 and one, seven and oh in the WBL. Have to win tonight for that huge showdown next week at Wapakoneta. Yeah, I don't want to use the word pressure, but I think they could come out with a little bit excitement tonight. They just got to play their game. They also have to, you know, do a good job putting pressure on the quarterback. We've both seen both of these football teams, and Mr. Ziffel is very capable of both the RPO of running and passing, and he's got three really good running backs. And one of them is just coming back from an injury, uh, Mr. Uh, Castillo, and he's going to be, you know, he's added luxury there to the defiance. But both of these ball clubs have a lot writing on tonight's game, especially computer points. Well, let's hope we can get it in before the bad weather comes in. They're calling for some bad weather, but it's going to be a dandy, partner. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Salina High School. And over Darren Gilbert for WSN's High School Football Care Week. And Gilly, before we get ready for kickoff here, you look at both these teams, and boy, they like to pound and ground. You know, they rush a lot. Defiance, 220 yards a game. Salina likes to carry the rock. They'll go for just over 212 yards a game. So we're going to see a lot of physical football tonight. Oh, absolutely, especially down in the trenches. That's the best part of the game to sit here and watch tonight. You know, we're starting out on a dry turf. It looks like the field's in good shape. You know, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, we're expecting yeah. this rain tonight. It's going to be interesting to see, especially those kids that like to use the cut back and, and spin moves to be able to keep their feet tonight. And the footing is going to be, hopefully it doesn't get treacherous tonight. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. So Salina, the home team, they'll be kicking off to Defiance. And we are just about underway in a huge WBL matchup, and we are now officially underway. And it's a deep kick fielded right at the goal line, well, into the end zone. Defiance will come out, and they'll start at the 20-yard line. Mr. Derryberry right on top of that one, huh? Yes, he was. Defiance will be led on the field by number four, quarterback Brad Zippel, the junior 77 of 223. 1,106 yards, 16 touchdowns, and five interceptions. He takes care of the ball, Darren, and he's very athletic. Oh, he's very athletic. You know, we watched him and had him against Kenton, and he did some good things also as running backs also. He's got the big one back there, Brogan Castile, who's had battle injuries a lot this year. He's got two receivers to his right, one to the left. He's in the shotgun formation. They got a man in motion. Ziffel takes the ball, looks across the defense. Looking to throw under pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He's being pursued by a host of Bulldogs, and he's just going to throw it out of bounds. There you see the, the, the intelligence of that young man. He's not going to force the ball away, and he just throws it out of bounds. Yeah, that was a pretty heady play there by that young man. Good pressure there by the big fella, the defensive end, 250-pound senior, Caden Merlin. Also with the help of Carter Allstetter. Last, linebacker, Gilly, last week, the, the, the Defiance Bulldogs had a nail biter. They get by Bath 28 27. They know how to win close games, but they've lost a couple close games. There's a hand up up the middle to Castillo, and he is taken down immediately right in the middle of that Salina defensive line. Big number 58 for the Bulldogs, Dalton Chilcoat. Number 24, Castillo carrying the ball. Stop Merlin also in on the stop along with number one. 
Caleb Gabus. That'll bring up third and nine from the 21-yard line. Not much offense right here in the first two plays. 11.22 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Ziffles in the gun. He's got, uh, he's got Steele to his left. He's going to look across the middle. He throws across the middle, and he's got a man for a first down. That is a Cisco Funeral Homes first down. Dedicated excellence in service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes are family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Cisco Funeral Home is our first down sponsor. So a nice job of pitch and catch by the Bulldogs. Well, yeah, because they were bearing down on him. Mr. Ackley had him in his sights along with Elson. Good job, like you said, on the pitch and catch. Hanging in there, throwing that pass. Catch made by number five, Garrett Rodenberger. They'll try the right side, and that defensive line for Salina is staunch tonight as they try to run. Number 11, Anthony, number 11, Anthony Wilder up the middle. Allstetter stepping up, making a big hit right there. And a lot of times, Darren, you'll see them spread Anthony Wilder out. He'll go out to the wide receiver position. They do a lot of screens to him. They'll do a lot of uh, uh, sweeps with him. He's a very good athlete in space. Well, and I think against a team like Salina, their front is very, very physical and fast. Ziffel gets the gun. He looks across, goes to the left side. He's got a man out there. Immediately taken down. A big time hit by number zero, Harris Carver. Nice job. Harris on the stop. Of a Carver yards. Harris. Excuse me, Big Carver pop. Harris. Big pop. Carver Harris. I said Harris Carver. That's my okay. Apologies. You got a little excited. Well, I did get a little excited. Could you get a hit like that, brother? <laughs> That'll bring up third and 13 from the 28-yard line. Yeah, that's a great open field form tackle by that young man. Defiance comes in averaging 31 points a game, so they really know how to put points on the scoreboard. Zippel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his left. He's got trips to the right. He's got a single set receiver on the left. He's going to roll to his right. No, he's going to hand off to Castillo as he goes up the middle, and the big bruising bat goes towards the line of scrimmage, but he's going to be well short of a first down, and that'll bring up our first punting situation of the year. you got to love the way Ackley plays at that linebacker spot. He's got that little, I like to use that Dick Butkus attitude. I mean, he's this early and physical. Nice job by him staying home, making that open field tackle. That'll put Defiance in pump formation back deep for Salina at the 35-yard line. Number four, Braylon Gabus. We know how explosive that young man can be. Punt goes up, and they're going to try to stay away from him, but he is going to let it bounce, and it touches a Defiance defender, and it'll go down about the 32-yard line. So that's where the Salina Bulldogs will start on offense. They'll be led onto the field by their quarterback. Number three, Bobby Morris, the junior, 45 of 78, 517 yards, five touchdowns, and five interceptions. They also like to run a lot on the ground, Darren. Well, they like to run it on the ground, and I'm telling you, you got one of the leading tacklers, if not the leading tackler in the league, and Mr. Joey Robinson, inside linebacker, junior. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got two to the right, one in motion. He's got a single setback off to his left side. He's going to hand up to the first guy coming through, and a nice gain of about eight yards. Number 11 for the Bulldogs, John Lutz. The 6'1", 175-pound junior carries it for about seven yards. Yeah, Stockman on the stop. Nice job. The front opening up that A-B gap right there, giving him a big alley to get through. So here comes Salina. It'll be second and two from the 39, 8.32 to go. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got a single back off to his right, and he's got a man in the slot. He'll move Lutz over to his left side. He's going to hand the ball. No, he's going to keep it himself. He goes through the gap on the left side, and there goes Bobby Morris as he gets another Cisco Funeral Home first down. Lopez on the stop, first down, Bulldogs. Yeah, he, not, not until Mr. Lopez chased him down. Big first down for the Bulldogs again. The line oh, of scrimmage. The they love to pull them guards. And when they pull them guards as a defender, you're like, uh-oh. But you're being taught to take those linemen on. Gilly you know, Salina comes in averaging 29.3 a game. Defensively, they give up 17.9. They rush for 212 yards, and they pass for 79 yards. So they're not going to throw the ball a lot, but they will give Bobby Morris in a lot of spaces where he can really run. Here's Morris as he looks across the field. He's going to go deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and he just overshoots the outstretched arms 
of number seven for the Bulldogs, Caden Wurtz. Yeah, he had to get rid of that because Mr. Robinson was in the backfield. Nice legal hit right there, but forced him to get rid of the football just a tad early. I really like how they brought the man in motion, and they brought the safety over, so the middle was clear. He had the man out there. He just overshot him. There you saw the nice, strong arm of Bobby Morris. Sure, looking vertical. So now they'll go Wildcat package. They'll bring in Corbin Lehman. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. That is Braylon Gabus as he's in the quarterback position. We call it the Wildcat. He's got two to the right, one to the left. He's going to take the snap himself as he follows the right tackle right up the middle for a gain of about two yards. So a little wrinkle in the offense for the Slina Bulldogs. Robinson, Ayazari on the stop. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 46. Clock continues to run at 7.13. Morris comes back into the game to take control of the quarterback position. Nice luxury to have when you have so many athletes on the offensive side of the ball in the skill yeah. positions. You can rotate them in and out of that quarterback spot. Morris is in the gun. Now we've got some confusion. We had two men in motion. Morris is in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right, looking downfield under heavy pressure. As he tries to elude the tackle. He's trying to throw it, and he just throws it into the ground. And a nice job by Bobby Morris to avoid the rush and to save the football. The stiff arm that he threw right there <laughs> kept him from getting tackled. Seriously. I mean, they were coming at him aggressively and hard, and that left-hand stiff arm kept that defender just off him long enough where he could, like you said, throw it in the turf. And now it'll be Salinas turned to punt back deep for the Defiance Bulldogs. Number 11, Anthony Wilder, and number 12, Antonio Lopez, back at about the five-yard line. Out in punt formation Jones, for the Bulldogs, Jones. Xander Jones, the 5'11", 190-pound senior. Try to flip the field position here for the Salina Bulldogs. Good snap. Kick is up, and a dandy, a high spiral punt is fielded at about the 15-yard line, and that's where he'll be taken down. Anthony Wilder fielded a nice punt, and he was immediately taken down. Johnny Lutz. Catching the ball and stopped immediately by Carver 6.33 to go. Carver Harris, there's that man again. He's all over the field tonight, Gilly. I thought, I thought it was number 11. <laughs> We are pleased to announce new pricing for the oh, WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So here come the Defiance Bulldogs. This is, <coughs> excuse me, Brez Zippel. He's going to go to the right. He'll go back to Castillo. Nice cut by Castillo, wasn't it? They turned him inside. Brody nice little Castillo jab. Push off on that outside leg. Got as much as he could. There he is, a load to bring down. He's got over 90 attempts already this year, just over 550 yards and three touchdowns, but he is really a load to bring down. When he's healthy, they're as good as anybody in the WBL. I totally agree. And You know, he got dinged up and missed some time, but it's good to see him bounce back at a great time of the season to come back from that injury. Zippel's in the gun. He's got Castillo to his left. He's got Wilder to his right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to go to Castillo off the right side, and he follows his blockers, and he goes to about the 30-yard line, or that'll be another Cisco Funeral Home first down. Oh, Romeo Valley pulled from that guard spot. <laughs> yes, he did. My goodness. Got his shoulder squared, laid the boom right there, and allowed that running back. Darren, to get enough for the first down. Salina only allows 147 yards on the on the ground, and they allow through the air 163. And you know what? You take that first game away against for sales. Yes, which I had. Which yeah. you had. They did not look very good that night. Mm -hmm. But look where they've came from just that first week. They have done a great job. This is Wilder as he snakes through the left side. And he is an athlete, Darren. They love to get him out in space. And there you saw the wheels of Anthony Wilder. You're right, Darren. That first game against Versailles, they really looked uh, they looked a little complacent. They looked like they didn't have their 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 legs under them. It just but you knew, you knew they were gonna be better, and my goodness, I didn't think they were gonna be this good, but they are outstanding. They're outstanding, and that you know that's a tribute to the kids' work ethic as well as the coaching staff. So here's Zippo in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his right. He's got three to the left. He's going to roll off to the right, looking for anybody downfield under heavy pressure, and he's just going to throw it away. And he got a bunch of pressure by big number 58. Chilco. Dalton Chilco, nice pressure. But yeah, I mean, 
and losing to Versail no slouch. I mean, here they, here, here they are. They're sitting. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a tough w- opening weekend for the Western Buckeye League. Let's, it sure was. Let's just be truthful about it. That'll bring up third and four from the 35, 4.37 to go. 0-0 zero, zero here on the scoreboard. Defensive battle so far here at Salina High School. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo. He's going to pitch the ball to Castillo. Castillo's going to follow his blockers, and he is hit immediately by that Salina defensive line. And right now, Darren, that Salina defensive line is really weighing heavy on the offensive line of defiance. Well, and those linebackers are stepping up into the hole, and they're going to hit you. Layman on the stop right there. That'll put us at fourth and three from the 36-yard line. And it looks like Defiance is going to go for it here. Well, no, they're going to put Brez Ziffel back in punt formation. So a little bit of trickery here. Ziffel falls back into punt formation. He teasing you. <laughs> a little bit. Clock continues to run here Gavis in the first quarter. Returns. He's got Gabus deep back for Salina. He's going to call a fair catch. And he'll grab it about the 32-yard line. So there you see Braylon Gabus. Tonight's... Touchdown sponsor is the Citizens National Bank. See how we're building business one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Aaron, I love having these broadcasts where we get a lot of sponsors oh, it shows the, the community involved, and we just are so happy to well, partner up with these community businesses, and they do a fantastic job. Yes, they do. They support the kids and the school districts and the communities. It's awesome to see. So here comes Bobby Morris and the Salina Bulldogs. Oh, they've got number four again. This is Braylon Gabus back in the Wildcat package. He's got two to the right. He's got a single set back off to his left. Man in motion. Gabus is going to take the ball. He's going to keep it himself. He goes off the right side, cuts back to the middle. Gain of about two yards. He's met right there in the middle by big number five for the Defiance Bulldogs, Garrett Rodenberger, the 6'3", 185-pound senior, laid a lick. Along with Robinson, Stockman, Last week, Salina rolled into OG and took out 27 to seven to stay undefeated in the WBL. Bobby Morris is back in the game. He's got a one single back to his left. He's got two to the right, two to the left. He's got one in motion. We'll go with second and eight from the 35. Morris tries to pitch back. He's under heavy pressure. He looks around. He's gonna scoop it a little bit, a shovel pass there as he tried to hit number eight. And that was Carter Allstatter. Excuse me, that was number nine, Parker Berkey. You know, yeah. His jersey kind of fold up a little bit. You get the caught between nine and an eight. Right. <laughs> yeah, we had the same problem with a three and an eight and a three <laughs> right. last week. But uh, Stockman did a good job with the pressure right there, forcing him, you know, out of the pocket, making him make a little rush decision right there. and. Incomplete pass for the Bulldogs. Bring a third and eight from the 35. 303 to go. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got a back to his right. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw off to the right. He's got a man out there. He'll go across the 40, and that's where he'll be taken down, pushed back around the 37 yard line. Back to Jones. He makes a complete catch. Uh, Rodenberger had him by the ankles, initially slowing him down. Going to bring him third and eight from the 35. Lopez me, coming in, excuse me, Le- no, Lopez coming in to clean up the play. Xander Jones will come in to punt. Anthony Wilder is back deep for Defiance. Don't you find this a little odd? I mean, it's a change of field position, but they're yeah. getting the ball at about the same place. So both te- yeah. teams are doing a great job defensively. Yeah, defense is the name of the game. And under heavy pressure, an almost block. He just got that one away. And I don't know if they may have touched that, Darren. That was really close. If not, I'm sure that punter was seeing white and blue coming at him. And it was more than one. So 2.15 on the clock. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. So a, a, a nice warm night to start the game, Gilly, but they're calling for some really nasty storms coming in here. We're watching the weather. So far, so good. You had to bring that up. Didn't you? <laughs> I did. You just had to bring it up. I did. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off his right shoulder. He's got two to the left, one to the right. 
He's going to look across the middle. He'll throw down the right side in a weaker, or a wobbler of a ball, excuse me. And it's picked off, picked off by number zero, Carver Harris. Carver Harris right now is doing everything the right way. Yep, you screwed his name up first. <laughs> called him Harris Carver. I did. I and did. I think the young man heard you up there. I did. Because I'll tell you what, he's been all over the place. You know what? If he keeps playing like this, I'm sure we, he'll let us call him anything we want. So Carver Harris with the interception. And then not, not a real good pass by Brad Zipp. It looked like he was thrown off his back foot, Darren. It looked like he was off not only his back foot, but the, the ball come out. I don't want to say slippery, but it just didn't come out right, didn't have that tight right. spin on it, and didn't have enough air on it. Great play there by Mr. Harris for the INT. 2.09 on the clock, first and 10 from the 44. That's where Bobby Morris and the Bulldogs will take over. He's going to hand the ball off. Off to the left side, they'll go down the sideline, and he'll be hit immediately out of bounds. A gain of about seven, John Lutz. We see him carry the ball for a second time there, and a nice big gain of about eight yards. I'm sitting up here chuckling, but I'm telling you what, if you got big number 55 Merlin coming and bearing down on you, you better be ready to go, because he opened that gap up to allow that ball handler to go right behind his backside up the left side and out of bounds here near us. We'll go second and two from the 48. Bobby Morris is in the gun. Now he's got trips off to the right. I'm no, excuse me, quads off to the right. Four receivers off to the right, one to the left. He's going to keep it himself. They spread the field and Bobby Morris goes up the middle and he's going to be awful close to another Cisco Bobby Funeral Home Morris first down. Let's see if he gets it, Darren. He only had two yards to go. Third and one. No, they're going to say he only got a yard. Boy, it looked like he got that first down. Yeah. Nice job there by Salinas and Gibbs, keeping him short on this third down and a long one. And they'll bring Braylon Gabus back in to run the quarterback position in the Wildcat formation. They like to run him out there. He's a really good athlete, and he'll move the chains here. So Gabus is in the shotgun. He's got two to the right, one in the slot position. And he's got number nine, Parker Berkey, off to his right. Gavis takes the ball. He's going to keep it himself. He stumbles a little bit, and he does just get across the first down marker. If they oh, mark I it that way, short. I think they may say he's short. One official's coming in from the Gavis far side. The Let's see what they do. This is a big-time decision here right at midfield, and they're going to say they're going to say he's short, Darren. And if he's short, it's by inches. Well, yeah. here's what happened. They were running the play and trying to pull the guard, and both the guards hit one another. That's one of the reasons why there was no lead blocker on that particular play. Bring up fourth and one from the 47. 44 seconds to go. Gabus is in back in the Wildcat formation. He goes across and he gets the first down. He, he paid a price, Gilly, but he picks up the first down. Bobby. Yeah, Rodenberger had a shot at him. He shot the gap. The but come up with air, diving for him. He does. But boy, he give a heck of an effort. He was in the backfield. He just couldn't wrap him up. The clock continues to run here in the first quarter, a quick first quarter. Well, he didn't get it by much, did he? He did not. So we're down to 20 seconds. Let's see if they even run a play here to end the first quarter. Bobby Morris is back in the game. We're at 13 seconds, first and 10 from the 46th. Morris has got trips to the right. He's got number 11, John Lutz, off to his right. This will be the last play of the first quarter. They'll give the ball to Lutz, and he'll be taken down immediately for a gain of about two yards. And that will end the first quarter. So after one quarter of play from Salina High School, we are all knotted up at zero as it's a defensive struggle. We're watching high school football on WSN. Welcome back to Salina High School. We're after one quarter of play. We are all knocked at zero. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert, and Gilly. You know, for all the offense we talked about, both teams averaging right around 30 a game. We're in a 0-0, zero -zero and defense is the name of the game right now. Well, it's, it's turning into a field position game. Both teams are doing an excellent job defensively minimizing and neutralizing the big play. You know, I listened to Mark Shine tonight. He was exactly right. The big play could be a huge difference in this contest tonight. We played one quarter, and neither team is really moving the ball with any effectiveness. Here comes Gabus as he's back in the Wildcat formation. He goes across the middle. He gets a block, and he gets another Cisco Funeral Home first down, an 11-yard gain. And there you see why they have Braylon Gabus in the Wildcat formation. 
Yeah, he was brought down right there by number 11, well, Anthony Wilder. And this is the deepest penetration of the night by either team, Darren, as they have the ball now at the 34-yard line. And I would say one thing. If, if Defiance has the edge, then it's probably in the kicking game. They have, they have a kid that's bonafide that can kick that 30, 35, 40-yard field goal. So Gabus stays in the game in the Wildcat formation. He's got a single set back off to his left, and he's got two to the right. He's got a man in the slot. He'll take the snap. He's going to keep it himself as he goes to the left side, goes across the 30 to the 25, and he gets another first down as he gets a pickup of about 12 yards. There you see Braylon Gabus, and he took some hits, Darren, and kept on going. I'm telling you, Mr. Eichler, the 6'1", 225-pound senior, Blew a big hole, hole right there on the left side, allowing him to get through, like you said, and just punished his way down to what, to 20, 21-yard yeah, line? Yeah, I was going to say about the 21-yard line. It'll be first and 10. 11.07 to go here in the second quarter. Bobby Morris is back in the game at the quarterback position. He's got two to the right, a single receiver to the left. He's got a man in motion. Morris is going to hand the ball off. They'll sweep around the right side. And not much of a pickup there. Handoff was to number two. That was Caleb Gates. Jones Big the play right there by, by Mr. Rodenberger in the open field. No Excuse me, Xander Jones. I'm correct on that. Number two, Xander Jones. That'll bring up second and 11 from the 22. Ten twenty-four to go. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got a single back to his right. He's got trips to the left, a single receiver to the right. Morris looks across the field, throws deep down the right side, and he's going to overshoot the receiver and almost intercepted, and the ball bounces out of bounds. Yeah, that, that pitch and catch, he threw that a little bit too far to the outside, I think. I'm trying to see who Morris that was. Xander Jones, Jones, I think he was looking to... Little slant action to the inside, and the ball was just a little bit off timing-wise. Bring up third and 11 from the 22, 10, 10 to go. Danny Howard, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Key WBL matchup as Salina tries to stay unbeaten in league play as they're atop the league standings at 7-0 right now with a big showdown with Wapakoneta next weekend. Bobby Morrison's in the gun. He's got Xander Jones in the slot position. Morris looks across under heavy pressure. They'll go screen pass out to the right side. And it'll be to number 11, John Lutz. And he's taken down about the 20-yard line, maybe the 19-yard line. Good job by Rubio, as well as Mr. Rodenberger right there. Nice job staying at home, making that open field tackle on, like you said, that screen. And Gilly, that's going to bring up fourth and about nine. They've got fourth and eight on the board at the 19-yard line. And they will try a, a kick here. Zach Greber. The 5'9 senior attempts a field goal here to give Salina the 3-0 lead. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. And it is good. He could have knocked that in from 50, Gilly. He really nailed that one. Yeah, so he with got a little momentum on that one, didn't he? With 9.20 to go, the Salina Bulldogs have taken a 3-0 lead. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Salina High School with 9.20 to go. The Salina Bulldogs have taken a three to nothing lead here in a defensive struggle. But uh, we saw the uh, Bulldogs get on the board with a <laughs> outstanding kick. Can you imagine that kid kicking a soccer ball? He <laughs> no, plays soccer, yeah. I was just told. And I'd be half afraid to take one off the head or try to, you know, if you're a goalie to deflect one, it'd have to hurt. Zach Greber, and uh, it was a fantastic kick, and it hit the trees behind the goalpost, so. That young man does a great job, and here he's going to kick off. Okay, let's define that. It was halfway up on the trees. Yes, you're right, absolutely. Look at this kick. And he puts one down into the end zone, and they're going to say it went out of bounds Whoa. before it went into the end zone. And Boy, that was that close. was close, Gilly. That was really close. But they're going to say it went out of bounds, and they'll throw the flag. 
The WSN Score app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old one, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. So let's see if Defiance can respond here, Gil. You gotta believe they're gonna they're gonna lean heavily on the legs of Big Brogan Castile. You know, I hate saying this, but you brought it up about the weather. First to score, we got a three-nothing game right here. Yeah, you're right. Defiance, you know, I hate I hate to have to put that out there, but they've got to get a sustained drive here and try to get some points. There goes Castillo as he goes across the 35 to about the 36, 37 yard line. Good tackle. Down. And you saw that tackle, and the Salina defenders are getting low on him, Gilly, because he is a Oh, low. yeah, he's got <laughs> some thick thighs. Yes, he does. Braylon Gabus on the stop. That'll bring up second and seven from the 38, 8.55 to go. Three to nothing, Salina leads here. Middle of the second quarter, a packed house tonight on the Salina side, lots of green everywhere. They'll go Anthony Wilder, and he's gonna throw the ball. Anthony Wilder passes the ball, and it's caught, and an unbelievable catch. Are you kidding me? What a catch. Let's see a Brady, number on that. Brady Borton, it appears Brady to be. Brady Borton, number two. What a catch by that young man. Brady Borton gave us cover. First yeah, time. Braylon Gabus did everything he possibly could. Anthony Wilder had kept the ball, and I thought they were going to sweep to the right side, but they'll go Brady Borton, the junior, 183-pound junior, makes an incredible catch over the defender's shoulder. That'll move the ball first and 10 to the 44-yard line. Another Cisco Funeral Home first down. Yeah, because the defense was good right there. Just a better catch. Ziffel's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man up and a gain of about two yards. And there you see Brogan Castillo. They're going to continue riding him, Gilly, because he wears down defenses. Merlin and Bellerman on the stop. Oh, yeah, he's going to get his touches tonight. Don't forget they got Rubio they can throw back there, too. He's and we have athletic. not seen Abel Rubio yet. We saw a lot of him a couple weeks ago in Kenton when Castillo was not playing. Played and, well. Yeah, he played really well. So they've got that horse in the stable, and uh, we'll maybe, maybe see him a little bit. Here comes Zipfel in the gun. He's got Wilder off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right, one to the left. He's going to look across the field under heavy pressure. He goes to the left, and he throws it to the sidelines. His intended receiver was number three, T.J. Kellemeyer. Incomplete. Play Actually up. on the pressure, along with Merlin. Who else? Mr. Allstetter, all, <laughs> cha all chasing down Mr. Ziffel. That'll bring up third and nine from the 43, 7.27 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Week nine, Gilly, of the high school. Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable how quick this season goes. Yeah, they moved that season up. <laughs> You're right. That's right. Ziffel gets the ball, looks across, throws a strike across the middle, and he's got a man out there. And a nice pitch and catch as he finds number two, Brady Borton. He tried to get him earlier in the game, Gilly, but a big 30-yard pickup for the Defiance Bulldogs. Big, big throw right there. Lutz on the tackle along with teammate Wesley Graber. Big throw. They found a spot right there in the seam, and they exploited it. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 23, 7-12 to go. The Defiance Bulldogs on the march. Yeah, that one had a tight spiral on it, and he zipped that one in there. Get it? Ha ha. Zip. <laughs> yeah, he'll appreciate that. He's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his left shoulder. He's going to hand the ball off to Castillo right up the middle. Trips on the grass a little bit and uh, falls down on one of his own linemen. Uh, nice hole there, but he just tripped a little bit. Yeah, and Bellerman was right there. He closed quick from that spot, made a big play. Clock continues to run at 6.35, second and nine from the 22-yard line. Darren, there, there ain't a seat on that home side. They, they brought everybody out tonight, the Salina Bulldog faithful. This is Zipfel in the gun. He's got Castillo. He's going to fake the handoff. Castillo, he's going to roll around, looks downfield. He throws to the middle. It's picked off. Picked off in the middle of the field. Picked off by Braylon Gabus as he goes down the right side. He's got one man to beat, and Castillo is going to take him down at the 30-yard line. Braylon Gabus playing center field and a big interception to stop the defiance drive. Yeah, heck of an athletic play by that young man to get that interception. But you know what? 
credit to Mr. Castilla. He could have very easily said, you know what, I can't run him yeah, down. Yeah, you're right. He saved the touchdown right there. You know, if you're defiant, now you want to make them earn it. There's six minutes to go here in this second quarter. Let's see how big that play was just in itself, running him down, saving that touchdown. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. The Salina got a chance to tack on some more points here. Bobby Morris takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man, and he just goes across the 25-yard line. And that's big number 11 for the Bulldogs, John Lutz. And my goodness, what a collision in the middle of the field. Yeah, he hit Robinson, and Robinson went back on his heels, but he hung in there and made the tackle. And you look out there at uh, number 17, Joey Robinson, and his teammate was holding him up, and Joey Robinson looked like he was shaking up a little bit, but he's going to stay in the game. That'll bring up second and six from the 25, 5.41 to go on a quick first half of football action from Salina High School. Bobby Morris has got three to the left. He's got Lutz off to his left shoulder. He's got a single receiver to the right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself as he goes up the middle, and he is going to take about a three-yard loss and a great job by number 32 for the Defiance Bulldogs, Kellen Gibbs, as he meets him right in the hole. Absolutely. A Salinas also in there helping out along with Phillips. So that'll bring up third and four from the 23, 5.09 to go. Three to nothing here as we come towards the halftime mark. We're under the five minute mark. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got Lutz off to his left shoulder, a single receiver to the left. He's got a man in motion and a single receiver to the right. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout. So Salina's going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOS 10. Back here at Salina High School, 4 4 to go. Salina leaves 3 to nothing. Gilly, we see turnovers in this game, and they're going to be huge when you're so evenly matched. When you're evenly matched and your defense is what, second, third in the conference? Yes. Fantastic defenses. Here's Bobby Morris in the gun. He's got four receivers off to his left. Here comes Gavis in motion. They'll bring him to the right side. Morris takes the snap, looks across the field. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket, throws deep down to the end zone. He's got a man out there, and it's picked up. No, it's dropped. Number one for the Defiance Bulldogs, and that was Logan Hutchison had it in his arm. That could have been a huge turn of events, oh, Gilly. A big turnover right there. Guess what? We're going to see the young man try to pop <laughs> one here. Could be a career high. Looks to be about 44 yards. They'll bring out number 22, Zach Greber. You saw how easy he put that first one through. This one will go from the 35. This will be a 45-yarder, Gilly. He hits it like he did the first one. He's going to make it. Let's see what they do here. 45-yard attempt, fourth and nine from the 28. Slina leads three to nothing, trying to add another three onto the lead. Snap is back, the hold is good. Kick is blocked, it is blocked! Anthony Wilder busted through the right side, Gilly. He dove Superman style and blocks the kick. Heck of a play right there, because I'll tell you what, that's a strong point in their special teams, and to come in there like Defiance did, big, big play right there. Anthony Wilder with a huge block to save three more from going on the board. And so the Defiance Bulldogs will take over on downs. What'd they get out of that possession, partner? Zero, that's right, you're absolutely Mr. right. Mr. Castilla running that kid down, it could very easily be 10 to nothing. You're right, that's absolutely, when you look at it like that, that is so true, Gilly, that Mr. Castillo takes him down out of bounds, they block the kick and save themselves another three. So here's Zipfel in the gun. He's got Anthony Wilder to his right, Brogan Castillo to his left. He's gonna hand to Castillo, he goes off the right side, and he gets a gain of about two yards. Clock continues to run, 4.24 to go. Castillo, the ball carrier, stopped by Lehman. Lehman and Ackley on the stop. Clock continues to run near the four-minute mark. 
Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his left. He's going to hand the ball to Castillo. No, he's going to keep it himself. He fakes the pass or fakes the handoff to Castillo. And not much work in there, partner. So the running game really a little stagnant right now as that's the line of defensive line is really being stout. Bellerman doing a good job up front, getting a little help from number eight, Allstetter. Big number 55 for this line of Bulldogs. Oh. <laughs> Merlin, he is a load in there. Both sides of the ball. <laughs> 333 to go, third and six from the 19-yard line. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to the right. He's got Anthony Wilder in the slot position and a wide receiver to the far right. He's going to go to Castillo as they spread the field. And Castillo gets away from the initial hit, and he's going to pick up another Cisco Funeral Home first down. That's just effort there, Gilly, because he was. was down. He went through three defenders. Well, the big one he went through was Merlin. Merlin did all he could do to keep him. He had to grab him by the back of the jersey just to contain him. Gilly Merlin is holding his arm. He was shaking his left arm like he was a little bit stung there. Let's you think he's, he's going to come out? No, 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 he's a warrior. No. <laughs> That'll bring up first and 10 from the 27, 259 to go. Simple throws to the right side. He's got his man out there, and they've got a completion. To number two, Brady Borton. You saw Brady Borton. He's been targeted three times tonight, two catches. And uh, when he's getting into the open field, he is a threat. Carver Harris right there on the stop. Clock continues to go. Second and eight from the 29-yard line, 2.31 to go. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Salina leads three to nothing on the Wabash Mutual scoreboard. You remember what we talked about at that Kenton game? If they don't put pressure on Ziffel, they allow him to get his feet set. He's really good. He can throw the football. Ziffel under pressure. He gets the ball out to Castillo off to the left side. Rogan Castillo goes across the 30 to about the 31-yard line, and he is taken down there by number 11, John Lutz. Good job by Lehman and Lutz. Gilly, so far so good with the weather. The flags are blowing a little bit, but nothing that's affecting the throws tonight by either quarterback. So really, really fortunate right now to have some good weather. Third and six from the 31. Boy. I know, I'm, I'm the kiss of death, ain't I? You're Mr. Weather Channel. I hope it holds off. <laughs> Third and six from the 31, 139 to go. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to the right. He gets the snap, looks across, throws to the right side. He's got a man out there. They'll go across the 30 to about the 32, and that's where he'll be taken down. The intended target, Brady Borton, and not a lot of light there. What a play by Zero, Carver, Harris. That's two excellent open field tackles he's had tonight. And that'll bring up fourth down, and Defiance will kick the ball away. They'll put Ziffel back in punt formation. Braylon Gabus back uh, around the 40-yard line. And there is a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth, Gilly, when we come back. 1-10 to play here until halftime. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Salina High School with 1.10 to go until halftime. The Salina Bulldogs lead the Defiance Bulldogs 3-0. Defiance is in pump formation. Brez Zipfel back to punt. And they'll try to keep it away from Braylon Gabus as he is a dangerous return man. He is sitting at about the 34-yard line. Yeah, I think Salina believes they can move the ball at least in field goal range. And they've it's, done well you know, the last two possessions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's the punt as they will keep it away from Gabus, a low liner as takes a good defiance bounce, and it'll go about the 26-yard line. That's where Salina will take over with one minute, 60 seconds to go, Gilly. One minute officially. Yeah, that's not a bad kick. Now, I know he's not happy with his distance, but he did get a good roll on it. That's If you're a defiance, you got to be happy with that, not letting Gabus get his hands on it and potentially get a nice return. Gilly, are you? And we talked about it before, but look, these are two teams that average 30 points a game, and we're a 3-0. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, the, the preparation that both these ball clubs put oh, in, it's showing, especially defensively. They'll go Gabus in the Wildcat formation again for the Bulldogs of Salina. First and 10 from the 27. Gabus takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, goes off the right side, finds a little crease, and he's going to pick him about four yards. Clock continues to run. We're at 50 seconds. 
I got to believe they're going to keep it on the ground here, Gilly, and be happy with a 3-0 lead unless they can bust one through. Well, unless I don't think they're going to get you know, any unless he, unless he looks vertical, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, absolutely. Bobby Morris comes back in the game for the Salina Bulldogs. Clock continues to run. We're down to 33. Second and four from the 33. Morris takes the snap. He drops the ball, and his knee was down. John Derry very quick on the call there, and they're going to call him down when he took the snap. His knee was down. Yeah, and I'm just curious. Yeah, Salina I don't think is going to burn this last time out. I think it was going to be predicated on that possession right there. Were they going to get something big where they had to use that last time out? I think they're satisfied going in with a 3 nothing lead. And that'll do it for one half a play from Salina High School. The Salina Bulldogs on the strength of a field goal lead this one 3 to nothing. We come back, we'll have second half action right here on WLSC. Tonight's halftime adjustment is sponsored by the State Bank. For all your banking and financial service needs, visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So, Gilly, here at halftime, Zach Greber, the only player to score for both teams, the place, or the, excuse me, the kicker, knocks in a big-time field goal, and he gives the Salina Bulldogs a 3-0 lead. Yeah, it's, it's come down to the turnovers right now. You know, I'm going to say it again. The play Castilla made, it could very easily be right now the play ten, of the game, yeah. The play of the game, it could yeah. be 10 to nothing. And you know what? They got a block field goal out of it and give them, their offense another opportunity. But there's no question it's been the defense on both sides of the ball. Even though Salina does have the two inter or has the two interceptions off of Defiance turnovers, uh, they've only converted that three points. And, you know, it's going to come down to who's going to make the adjustments. But both teams on the offensive line and the defensive side of the ball, both ball clubs are just absolutely laying it on the line right now and making it difficult and, and giving the headaches to the offensive coordinators of both ball clubs. Let's take a look at both squads, Gilly, for defiance. They haven't moved the ball well tonight. What do they need to do to get back in this game? And not that they're out of it. It's three to nothing. <laughs> I think they have to establish a running game, but the way defiance plays their defense, you know, they're not afraid to, to man up on the outside and also just take them linebackers and the front four with the linebackers, they can, they can cause havoc. So, Somehow, Defiance is going to have to stretch the field. I know they went to that little halfback pass, something that they're going to have to pull out of the playbook to get, hopefully, Salina to bite so they could use the vertical part of the field and attack them. And for Salina, Gilly, they've moved the ball down the field. They put themselves in two positions to score. They get the field goal, and then Anthony Wilder from Defiance makes an unbelievable block on another field goal. What does Salina need to do to continue that momentum? Well, I think Salina's just got to keep continuing to mix things up at the offensive standpoint, you know, and, and use those pulling guards to the best of their ability and do what they do best and try to get Get defiance on their heels. You know, hopefully this weather holds off. If you're Salina, you know, you don't want to get too overconfident, but you got to believe if it starts raining the way this defensive is and the heavy rain is supposed to be, what, all night long tonight, the field, it'll be interesting to see how the field holds up. And that, my friends, is our halftime adjustments. Our halftime adjustments are brought to you by the State Bank. For all your banking and financial service needs, visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Salina High School. Third quarter action just about to get underway here. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. And Gilly, we haven't got to talk about our touchdown sponsor tonight because we're 3-0 with no touchdowns in the first half. No touchdowns, and that's a credit to both defensive coordinators and the 11 players on both ball clubs on the defensive side. Defiance, Defiance will kick off here. Salina will receive the second half kick. So far, so good with the weather. I haven't jinxed anybody or anything like that. So You thought I'd bring the bad weather, didn't you? Well, after I pulled it up on the phone during halftime <laughs> and it says 96% at, what, 9 or 9.15? Maybe we'll get through it, Gilly. Maybe we'll get through it. All right, here we go. <laughs> 
Having a little trouble putting the ball on the tee there. This one will be teed up by number 30, Nikasio Hall, 5'10", 160 pounds junior. He's ready to kick this one away. And we are underway. Nice high kick, fielded at about the 10 yard line. They'll bring it up across the 25, and that's where we take it down at the 25. And a flag immediately comes in from the back judge. We'll see what that's about. Stop by Taylor to find through the flag of the play. Holding against Salina, that'll back it up 10 yards, and that's not what they wanted to see on the very first play of the second half. You know, if my memory serves me correctly, is that the first uh, yellow yep, flag we, of the night? Yep, we were. I was as soon as you said that, I thought to myself, "That's the first flag of the night." It's been a very clean game. Look, you're not going to find two better coach teams than these two teams. They're, they're these two coaches are fantastic. Well, they're executing at a high level, that's for sure. So here come the Salina Bulldogs. They'll start in the gun. Throws off to the right side. I believe that one was just a little bit too high. I think it was a little bit incomplete. Bobby Morris, his pass was just a little bit outside the outstretched arms. That'll bring it second and 10 from the 15. We have a hard time here from our vantage point, sometimes on the sidelines of seeing the play here. So we have to wait a few minutes to get the call here. 11.50 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Three to nothing, a WBL defensive battle. Braylon Gabus is back in under center. He's in the shotgun. He's got two to the right, one in the slot position off to his left. Gabus takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, goes off the left side, follows these blockers, goes across the middle, and he picks up about four yards. A nice pickup there by Braylon, Braylon Gabus as he has been Mr. Rubio. Offense tonight for the Salina Bulldogs. Rubio and Rodenberg are on the stop for the blue and white. And we haven't talked much about Abel Rubio, who's on the defensive side of the ball. He is the, the, the sub back for the offensive sets, and he hasn't carried the ball tonight. So he did a great job a couple weeks ago when Gilly and I did Defiance and Kenton. Well, the word was coming in, you know, Castillo, Castillo, how much is he going to play? We're finding out tonight that he's getting the back to 100%. Here's Gabus. He's in the gun again. He's going to keep it himself. Goes off the left side. And he is going to pick up another Beautiful. Cisco Beautiful. Funeral Beautiful. Home first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Cisco Funeral Beautiful. Homes, dedicated to excellence and service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes, our family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Yeah, the Bulldogs, Salina, the home ball club, is actually seeing something on that left side of the offensive line. And they're chunking some yards right here just in the beginning of this third quarter, partner. They'll bring Bobby Morris back into the game. He's got Braylon Gabus off to his right shoulder. He's going to hand the ball to Gabus, and he is immediately taken down in a big-time hit. Sure was. <laughs> by sure. number My 37. Mr. Stockman. Cohen Stockman. Boy, he shot through the gap, didn't he, Gilly? He did. Gilly, you take a look at the WBL standing. Salina sits atop a 7-0. Wapak at 6-1 and Defiance at 5-2. and So these two tonight and Wapak next week are going to determine the rest of the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, because you know what? Defiance very easily could be sitting with one loss also. Sure, they had sure. a hiccup against Van Wert, and I'm trying to think who else got him. Was that, I think it was Wapak, correct? Yeah, they lost to Van Wert and to and Elida got him by a point. Okay, that's yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. They came back and won. Morris is throwing deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and he's got a reception. He'll take it across the 30 to the 28, and a pitch and catch for the Salina Bulldogs. Number two, Xander Jones hauls it in. Well, we got a flag on the far side. Let's see what that calls about. The Salina coaches. I, I'm thinking it's going to probably be a sideline warning. I could be wrong. And the biggest play of the night for both teams, and it is a sideline warning for the Salina Bulldogs. I did not see the side. Then the coaches are backing the kids up. But boy, Gilly, there's not a there's lot not of space lot, no, between the bleachers and the in the field. So it's I I don't but understand. It is marked. It, it, but is. it is marked. Sure, there I get is a it. white line over there. But I agree with you. You know they're putting in a tough spot both sides of the the field. You know the kids are anxious. There's just not a lot of room. Had to bring up first and 10 from the 27th, so the biggest play of the night for both squads. 
Braylon Gabus back in the Wildcat. He's got two to the right. He's got a back off to his left. John Lutz off to his right. He'll take the snap. The ball's fumbled. He picks it back up. Gabus tries to get some room. He goes and he is hit hard. Braylon Gabus and he was hit hard, Darren. Yeah, Mr. Rodenberger laid the wood right there to him. Yes, he did. And they've got an injury on the field, and I believe that is Braylon Gabus on the field. Field. Let's see. Rubio on the stop for the Flyers. He was hit really hard as he gets up real slow, and he's going to walk off the field on his own accord, which is a good sign. Takes his helmet off, but uh, I think he just got the wind knocked out of him, Gilly. Yeah, that was a heck of a high school hit right there. Very legal. Led with the shoulder. Had to bring up second and seven from the 24. 9.18 to go on the Wabash Mutual scoreboard. Bobby Morris in the gun. He's got Lutz off to his right. He's going to take the ball. Looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. Throws it. He's got a man. Oh, and just through the arms of number 24. That is Nick Newell as yeah, he uh, tried to catch the ball, but he just missed it. Well, and, you know, and John Lutz is jumping up and down over there. There was not a defender around him, but the pressure was just so insurmountable right there that Morris just could not get his feet set quick enough to get him the football. I mean, they were bearing down on him, and it was more than just one blue and white jersey. That'll bring him third and seven from the 24, 9.07 to go. And Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Huge WBL showdown. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got John Lutz to his right. He's got a man in motion. He's got a single receiver to the left and the right. He's going to give the ball to Lutz off the left side as he scampers across the 20, and he gets about to the 17-yard line, close to another Lutz Cisco down, funeral home down, first down. What a cut by that young man. Very like patient starting out, yard. planted that outside foot, found a little seam, let it develop, and just accelerated his way through, Gilly, making it a fourth and one. That's going to bring up fourth and one from about the 18-yard line, and it looks to me like Salina's going to go for it here. Yeah, this is where you got to lean on your five up front. Open up just enough to get that yard. So they'll go Braylon Gabus in the Wildcat formation. John Lutz to the left. He's got a single receiver to the right. He's got one in the slot and a single receiver to the left. Gabus keeps it himself, goes across the first down marker, and he picks it up for another Cisco for no home first down. And that brings the Salina faithful to their feet. Great job by the interior lineman up front on that left side, opening up a not just a small hole, but a gashing hole there, allowing for him to get more than that initial one yard. So Salina has controlled the clock this entire second half here as they've taken their opening drive of the second half, and they've made their way to the 12-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Yeah, that was all set up, like you said, by that vertical pass. There's Gavis in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. Goes across the middle, and he squeaks his way to about the six-yard line, maybe across the five, Davis and he's the hit there the by a host of Defiance Bulldogs. Robinson on the stop. Didn't Davis take him long to sit two. out, did it? No, it did not. He bounced his way right back in there. Wasn't afraid to put his shoulder down. That's going to bring up a second down. Second and two from the five. Keep in mind, Gilly, they can pick up a first down before they take it into the end zone. Yeah. Second and two from the five. That's a good call. That's a good point. Robinson on the stop there for the visitors. They'll keep Gabus in the shotgun. He's got Lutz off to his left. He's got a single receiver to the left and one to the far right. Lutz moves over to the right side. There goes the man in motion. Gabus is going to keep it himself. Goes across the five and into the end zone. Touchdown! A touchdown for the Bulldogs. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is the Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. There you saw the versatility of Braylon Gabus. He did everything on that drive. Yeah, Gilly. it went right behind Mr. Merlin on that left side between the left guard and left tackle. And it was not a small hole that was created right there. And he just scampered his way to the end zone. So they'll try the point after attempt to make it 10 to nothing with 7.40 to go. Snap is back, hold is good, the kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.40 to go in the third quarter, the Salina Bulldogs flex their muscles a little bit, and they lead 10 to nothing. You're watching High School Football on WLSN. Welcome back to 
the Salina High School with 7.40 to go. The Salina Bulldogs have taken a 10 to nothing lead. 10 to nothing doesn't seem like a lot, but in this game, Gilly, with the defenses playing as well as they are, that's a big statement right there. Well, and it all started with that vertical pass, you know, that he got by the two defenders, and what a beautiful pass that was thrown and a great catch, and it set it up with, and like you said, they just went ground and pound in the offensive line. Did, did what they do best, and that's just gashing holes and, and winning the line of scrimmage and had Defiance on their heels, and they punched it into the end zone. Salina will kick back to Defiance, back deep for the Defiance Bulldogs, Anthony Wilder and Abel Rubio. And it looks like it'll be fielded by Anthony Wilder at the 10. He'll go to the 20. He finds a crease, gets to the 25. He's at the 30. And there comes another flag in, second consecutive kickoff where we've seen a flag come in. Comes in from the back judge. Let's see what this one's all about. There's a flag on the field. Yeah, I'm curious exactly what this is. It'd be interesting to see if maybe it was a face mask. Now the one official's pointing towards the Salina side. And John Dar Barry Darius says, First personal foul, foul face, face mask man. against Salina. Gilly, that's huge. That's an additional 15 yards. That'll take it up to the 45-yard line. You know what I thought you were going to say to me? What? For a 60-year-old, you still got pretty good <laughs> eyesight. <laughs> well, and I you know what I was going to tell you? That's called pure luck is what that is. <laughs> I thought you were you kind of <laughs> guessing on that. But it does sound like you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> put the ball to yeah, 45. That's huge, though. In, in all seriousness, that's huge. That's an extra 15 yards. Sure. You know, defiance, you know, and I said it earlier in the first half, the weather's cooperated, but you gotta, you got to be thinking you got to get some type of points here in this third quarter. Here's Zippo in the gun. He's got Castillo. He'll hand the ball to Castillo. He goes off the left side, following Wilder on the block, and there's another flag. That's going to be a hold because it's right in the middle of that line. Now, yeah. I didn't see it, but I'm guessing. I, I did. Yeah, it was a, yeah. No, you know, it happened to be right there on the corner. And I won't say who did it, but it was against John Lutz and had him by the jersey. And... So Defiance with, uh, or excuse me, back-to-back -back penalties, one on Salina, one on Defiance. So we have saw more penalties here in the third quarter than we saw the entire first half. Well, and you also got to believe fatigue is sure. probably going to play a little sure. part of it because both teams are just well, getting after it defensively, so to speak, on both sides of the ball. And we got a lot of these kids that are going both ways. That will bring up first and 19 from the 36. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his left. He'll hand to Castillo. He'll go right up the middle for a gain of maybe a yard, and they continue to pound the middle and trying to find anything they can. Rogan Castillo shot down again after a gain of maybe a yard. Yeah, Mr. Ackley met him right there in the hole, and like you said, you cannot go in the upper body to bring him down, and he did. He went down at the ankles and slowed Castillo up. That's a, you know, a very here. positive way to bring that this young man is, down. Uh, this is second 16, and I dare I say it's the most important play of the game because if they go third and long here, you become predictable when Salinas got you where they want you. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to the right. Anthony Wilder goes into motion. Ziffel looks across. He's going to go step up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. He goes across the 40, and he is nowhere near the first down marker. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up maybe two yards, and it's going to bring up about third and 15, Gilly. Well, Bellerman, you know, number 39, it's not going to get credit for any tackle there, but his pressure on the right side forced Ziffel out of the pocket letting his teammates come in and make the stop right there. Nice job by the interior of Salina. Coming up third and 14 from the 41. Zippel's in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right and a single receiver to the left. Zippel looks across the defense, steps up in the pocket. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to the right. He's taken down. And a huge sack by big number 50, Tucker Ackley. The 5'8 senior knocks him down in his tracks. Mr. Ackley with a big, big play there. Boy, I thought he was going to get away from him, Gilly. He stretched it out to the right side, and Ackley just reaches for his feet and grabs him. Yeah, he extended his whole body right there. Got Ziffle by the ankles. Big, big play. That'll put Braylon Gabus back in uh, punt formation, or excuse me, back in punt reception here at the 30 yard line. As Defiance tries to flip the field here, down 10 to nothing, 5 10 to go. Clock continues to run. He kicks the ball, and it is a low line driver, and it will go out of bounds at right about the 30 yard line, picked up by a Salina head, or a Salina coach there. 50 50, 
Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Gilly, they can watch you from anywhere in the country. See old Gilly somewhere. They could be in Europe, in Asia, any China. They'd be able to watch you, Gilly. What a treat. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I can bring pleasure and enjoyment to the home sets. You know what I'm That's saying? That's right. Here comes the Salina Bulldogs 502, first and 10 from the 31. A big gainer of about nine yards. Big number nine. Luke West. Excuse me, that's not Luke Westfall. That is Parker Berkey. He brings it up the middle. Mr. Berkey found his way for a first down right there. And I'm telling you that these last two possessions. That's line of offensive line. The line really offensive line is starting to show some domination there and opening up holes. And those Salina running backs and quarterbacks are just salivating at the mouth, you know what I'm saying, to, to run that football. Here comes Bobby Morris. He'll hand the ball to Berkey again. Goes across the Mark 45. The and Gilly, but look at those offensive linemen for the Salina Bulldogs, Cameron Elson, Caden Merlin, Isaac Yaney, Dalton Chilcott, and Jack Eichel. They are, you know, 225, 242, 22, 60, 240. Them some big young men up front. And they're physical. Yeah. You know, but how many holding calls have you seen tonight? Not many. Not many. We'll go second and six from the 45 under the four-minute mark. Salina leads 10-0. This is Braylon Gabus in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, goes up the middle. And he is going to be taken down and a big time hit there by number six for the Defiance Bulldogs, Abel Rubio. Robinson also in Rubio. Robinson's been everywhere tonight. Look, it's 10 to nothing, and Defiance isn't out of this one. They played really well tonight, but they've got to figure out something and how to deal with this Salina offensive line. Yeah, they've just got to put them like they got them right now. They got them in third and long and to put them in a put them in a punting situation. There's Bobby Morris in the gun, third and five from the 46. He's got a receiver off to his right. He's got one in motion. He's going to take the snap. He's going to hand the ball off to number two. That's Xander Jones, and he is going to lose a yard there, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Good call, Gilly. They did a nice job of stepping Jones up on the defensive end Sure inside. did. Rubio. Yeah, and Kelton Gibbs did a really, really good job six. right there, just taking on the block and shedding his – Shedding his offensive lineman, stepping in there and making a, a, a tackle. So Xander Jones will go back in punt formation. Anthony Long Wilder standing at about the 20-yard line. That's where his heels hit the grass. 2.40 to go here in the third quarter. Salina leads 10 to nothing. Jones gets the snap. He, oh, a high punt, a beautiful spiral. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Anthony Wilder Jones did not have a chance to field it. Big Tonight's, leg right there. Big yeah, leg. absolutely. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. 2.27 to go here in the third quarter. Weather's holding off right now, Gilly. The flags are blowing, but not a, not a bad breeze at all. The temperature's still kind of warm here, low 60s. So here come the Defiance Bulldogs. Rez Ziffel. Under center, he's going to hand this Castillo. And I believe, Gilly, that's the first time all night Brez Ziffles went under center. They went out of the gun most of the time, and it was effective because they got about four yards on the Castillo run. Actually, a little more than that. looks like that, about, about five, five and a half yards. You're right. I mean, he just put his shoulders down. Offensive line opened up a crease right there. He went right behind him. Nice pickup. Second five from the 26. They're going under center again. Let's see if Castillo gets the call. And they'll fake the hand to go Anthony Wilder to the right side. He's got some room out there as he gets another Cisco well, Funeral Home three, first down. So Anthony Wilder goes to the right side, down, gets enough room defending. to pick up a first down for the Defiance Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. So back to back, positive gains for the Bulldogs. Maybe they've seen something they like. Yeah, he bounced it to the outside if it wasn't for Caleb Gabez over there on the far side, knocking him out at the boundary. If he got that corner turned, it was going to turn into a foot race. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 33. We're at 135 here in the third quarter. 
Ziffel in the gun. He's going to throw the ball off to the left side. He's got Wilder. He's got a block out there. He goes across the 35. He gets to the 39. And a nice job by Anthony Wilder of almost breaking that one. Boy, he was one man away from Gilly, and that was a six. Sure was. Braylon gave us on the stop along with Corbin Lehman. That's a nice kick out block by Rodenberger right there, freeing him up to get a little about five to six yards, like you said. That'll go second and four from the 39. Zipples in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his right. He's got two off to the right. He's going to look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He steps up in the pocket, throws to the right side. He's got a man out there across the 50 to the 45, and he slips. And a nice pitch and catch with number five. That is Garrett Rodenberger. We've seen him on both sides of the ball tonight. A nice job of the open field running. Yeah, he got his shoulder square. He was going to try to make a cutback, and his feet just went out from underneath him. If he'd have kept his feet, I think he'd got another 5, 10, maybe 15 yards. So Defiance here, a little bit of a hurry up. They found something that works, Gilly. They're mixing it up, and they're moving the ball down the field. And this is absolutely their best drive of the night so far. And they're only across midfield by a few. Ziffel's in the gun. He's going to look to pass. He throws to the left side. He's got, oh, he had Castillo out there, and he just dropped the ball. Yeah, he had the matchup he wanted to because who was defending him right there? Well, Castillo, yeah, Castillo was, he was guarded by number 58 out there, Dalton Chilco. Yes. He had to, he had, you know, I'll take a linebacker, running back on a linebacker any day of the week. You betcha. That'll bring up second and 10 with 31 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Zipples in the gun. He's got Castillo to his left, Wilder to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Anthony Wilder. He's following the block of Castillo. He gets a block. He goes across the 30. There's a flag on the play, and he'll be taken down at about the 25-yard line. Let's see what that call's about. Wilder, i got to believe we might There's have a seen a holding play. play out there. The yeah, that's twice, if that's the case, that Lutz has been held. He's doing such a good job. He does hold that defensive end spot he really does. well. He does. He does. Let's see what the call is. They're going to say hold against the Defiance Bulldogs. John Derryberry makes the call. That'll back him up 10. So a nice drive thwarted there on a holding call. And that, uh, Gilly, I don't know if you can hear the Defiance folks below our booth. They are not happy about that call. Well, it definitely helps you if you're a defender and you throw your hands in the air where you potentially think you're being sure, held. Sure, sure. It helps those officials make that decision just a little bit easier. That'll bring up second and 18 from the 49. Ziffel's in the gun. Rogan Castillo off to his right. Anthony Wilder's in the slot, and he's got two far wide receivers. He's going to look to throw the ball. Looks across the field. He's going to go outlet to Castillo. Goes across the 50. And a pickup of about five yards, and a nice job by Brogan Castillo of getting close to the original line of scrimmage. Boy, he had all day throw back there, Gilly. That offensive line did a nice job. Well, he was looking vertical, and Salina did a really good job taking that away. And that'll do it for three quarters of play from Salina High School. After three quarters, the Salina Bulldogs lead the Defiance Bulldogs 10 to nothing. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Back here at Salina High School, and Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert, Gilly, 10-0, <laughs> and I don't feel like this game's going either way. Either team can win this oh, game. Oh, absolutely. 15 minutes to go. You know, if, you, if you're a Defiance fan, they just got to continue. It's third down and long. You know, you got to put yourself in a position. You got to believe if they can get 10 yards here, it's going to be a, a, a four down territory. Let's see what they've got. Up they, their sleeve Castillo here. Castillo and the Wildcat. They're going to swing the ball back, and they're going to – and a trick play. They tried to – Castillo had the ball, Gilly, and he threw the ball back to Brez Ziffel. Ziffel was going to throw the ball. He was taken down, and there's a flag on the play, so a little trickeration that did not work for Defiance. But let's see what the play is – or the call is. I'm wondering if it's going to be a grounding because Castillo was in the area. Yeah. putting pressure on. Intentional grounding. Yeah, they're the going to say, and that's a loss of down, too. That'll bring up fourth down and a huge play, and that's going to put them out of like field goal range, obviously, because it pushes them back to the 35-yard line. Brez Ziffel will have to come out and punt, and back deep for the line of Bulldogs is Brez Ziffel. Yeah, he tried to make a play, but the pressure, 
I believe it was Allstetter on the pressure right there, forced him to take it out of his strong hand, the right hand. And I understand Siffle's trying to make a play, he tried to throw with the left hand, and the official did not feel like there was a receiver in the area. 11.52 to go. Zippo in pump formation. Snap is back, kick is up, off to the left side. Hits it about the 30 yard line, bounce to the 25, to the 24, and that's where it will be down at the 24 yard line. So with 11.39 to go in this game, the Salina Bulldogs lead 10 to nothing. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere, anytime. Sign up today at app.com. WSN.TV, also available on Roku and Apple TV. You know, special teams play. The exception it's been huge. The, it's, you know, special teams defensively on the block field goal, and guess what we got coming down? Oh, it's raining, and it is coming down. You had to, you had to say it. I didn't say it. I saw it. I did. You, did, you did see it. Well, we are under shelter here. So. But, I mean, special teams has been really good. We've seen some really good punch tonight. Kickoffs. Morris is going to hand the ball off to John Lutz off the right side, and Lutz goes for about John seven Lutz, yards. And you said it earlier, Gilly, on the previous drive, the Salina offensive line is really starting to take this game over. They are starting to take the game over, and they're getting the ball into the athlete's hands. And I think that's the first time Lutz has touched the ball offensively, but he's one of those game breakers, too, that could break one. He is exceptionally fast. That'll bring up. First and ten, or excuse me, second and three from the 32. They'll go Braylon Gabus in the Wildcat formation. They've got two receivers to the right, one in the slot, and a single back off to his right. And Gabus takes the ball himself. He's going to go off the right side. And he picks up the first down, and he goes off the right side. And a nice pickup of about 15 yards, Gilly. And boy, he just looked like he got shot out of a cannon. Yeah, when you get to the secondary to make your tackle, and that was Rubio right there. That, that's starting to tell me that the defensive line is starting to wear a down tired, a little tired. bit. Yeah. And, and Salina is starting to control the line of scrimmage. And obviously this stuff coming down, this H2O coming out of the yeah, sky is not going to help, my, you know, to find it's any better unless there's a big turnover right here. Another Cisco funeral home first down, 10.30 to play. Braylon Gabus is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, go off the right side, and he is stifled there. No gain at all. And a nice job. That looked like he ran into his own man, Gilly. They wanted to bounce it outside, and I think Phillips got enough of him to hold him up, him and uh, Salinas, to make the play right there. You know, Salina comes in, Gilly, averaging 30 points a game. If you're the Defiance coaching staff, and they tell you, fellas, if if tonight, if we got him at 10 points in the fourth quarter, what do you think? I'd, I'd think 100 times we got a chance to win this game. You betcha. You know, and they still do. Sure, sure. But they need some form of a miscue by the home ball club and then a, a punch in touchdown because it's a two possession game right now. There's Davis in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the field. He's going to be chased around the right side. Looks to throw it, but he's going to keep it himself, and he goes out of bounds. And he was looking long, Gilly, like he had a man. He had a man way down the field, but he did the smart thing and kept it. Went out of bounds. Yep, smart heady play. Salinas, Rubio. I got to be honest with you, Gilly, and I know they want to keep him on their heels, but the way this Salina offensive line is playing, I don't know that I'd throw the ball. They're just really grounding and pounding and having a lot of success. Well, this is a big one right here. You know, a third and an eight situation, you would think they would put it on the ground. Like you said, they've controlled the line of scrimmage this second half. Or do they set them up for something? Well, that's why we're in the booth and not catching. That's exactly. <laughs> That'll bring up third and six from the 48. And they're going to take a timeout and talk this one over. They're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Salina High School, where with 9.34 to go in this one, the Salina Bulldogs lead the Defiance Bulldogs 10 to nothing. 
really next week, Defiance travels to Ottawa Glandorf, which should be, you know, if all indications go the way both those teams have played, should be a win for the Defiance Bulldogs. And you look at Salina, they've got the big one. They got to go to Wapakoneta. If they win tonight, they'll have a share of the WBL title. They want the outright title. I can promise you that. Right. And you got two ball clubs, you know. Walpock started out slow. They're playing their best football of the year. Salina started out losing that opening game. They've been able to run the table. It's going to be a heck of a game next week. And you and I, Walpock. yeah, you and I will be on the call yes, for that one. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm thoroughly enjoying <laughs> it. It's a beautiful facility. You know, thank you to the people here at Salina for their hospitality oh, they, tonight. They've been fantastic. The pizza was good. <laughs> Thanks to both coaches for getting us the stats to be able to bring this to you tonight. Here's Morris in the gun. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got his man out there. And Braylon gave us a big-time reception. And there you saw Braylon gave us haul another one in for about a 45-yard gain. You know, when, when you set in defiance as a coaching staff and you watch the tape, that young man, fantastic. Hutchinson, or excuse me, Wilder was running stride. Yeah, he couldn't have guarded him any better. I guard think it was Wilder, number 11. I can't quite see. It's going to bring up first and 10 from the 14 yard line. Salina. It, it, it is, yeah, it is oh, Wilder. Yeah, they're going to try to put this one to sleep here with 9.08 to go here in the fourth quarter. Braylon Gabus is in the gun. He's going to keep the ball. He's going to hand the ball, excuse me, he's going to hand the ball off. That was the first man through, and that was Lutz, number 11 who's been Lutz pretty much their workhorse on the ground tonight. Robinson with the stop for the, Rubio on the stop visiting for Bulldogs. The I keep wanting to say Bulldogs. Well, there's two of them Two Bulldogs. There the Bulldogs are going to win tonight. Yes. Buckeyes go to Purdue tomorrow. Any, uh, any chance of an upset there, Gilly? No, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. That'll bring up second and six from the 10. 8.29 to go. I just would like to see if the Irish come back against Southern Cal tomorrow. Isn't that tomorrow? Yes, it is. Gavis is going to keep it himself as he goes off the left side, and he has taken down a gain of about two yards, Gilly. Uh, kind of confused on that play. They, it, was, it was a slow developing play, and the defiance defensive end really came in and cleaned up the house. Sure did. Rodenberger in there. Ayazari in there. Salinas in there. But here's the deal, Gilly. It was a two-yard gain, but you notice the clock continues to run. Oh, absolutely. The clock continues to run. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a Defiance, you got them in a long situation. They need a stop here. And Defiance has three timeouts left. Salina has two timeouts. Braylon Gabus is in the gun. He's got Lutz off to his left. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Goes off the left side. He goes to the corner. He's looking for the end zone. And he is in for a touchdown. He's in for a Citizens National Bank touchdown. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time. CNBOhio.com. The Salina Bulldogs have taken a commanding 16-0 lead. Big, big block here on the outside. Chill coat. And that was all set up by the big pitch and catch from Braylon Gabes and Bobby Morris. Eichler. Morris to hold. They'll try to tack two, on ten. the extra Boy, point here. Kick is up. It is good. So with 7.28 to go in this one, the rain comes down, and the points are a plenty for the Salina Bulldogs as they lead the Defiance Bulldogs 17 to nothing. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Back here at Salina High School, 7.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Salina Bulldogs lead the Defiance Bulldogs 17 to nothing. Gilly, if this one holds serve, and we have reports that Wapak's winning handily in their game, it's going to set up the showdown next week in Wapakoneta. If Salina can win that game, they'll be the outright champs. And Wapakoneta, if they win, they'll get a share of it. Yeah, it's going to be a heck of a matchup. I mean, if this game holds you know, twofold right here at 17 to nothing, it's going to be an absolute fun atmosphere. But Defiance has 7.28 to go. Let's see if they can get it together, put some points on the board, close the gap here. 
and a short kick, but a high kick. Fielded about the 23-yard line. And he'll be taken down right around the 30-yard line. That's where Brez Zipfel and the Bulldogs will take over. Good job by Salina there on their coverage. Billy, Gilly, this is a beautiful facility, and the, and the grass is in really good shape. And it's really nice when you come down here. It's, it's tight, really, in, in spaces, but I really like this stadium. Well, you know, and you take a look to our left, the basketball facility. Oh, I love the basketball know, it, facility. It's, it's it, iconic. It's special. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, it's a special facility and a special place to come play football. Now, is there some things that are different? Absolutely. Sure. But it makes it so unique. Absolutely. Here's Zippel as he's under heavy pressure. He throws it out and a nice pitch and catch. Taken down at about the 38-yard line with the reception. Rodenberger was on, made the, by, on yeah, the catch. Garrett Rodenberger, and he was thrown down. He was The jersey was grabbed. There was no horse collar, Gilly. The folks from Defiance are wanting a horse collar right. tackle, but he just grabbed his jersey and threw him down. Yeah, John it looked Lutz. more violent than what it sure, was. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, momentum was carrying the sidelines. Nice open field tackle. Here's Zippo in the gun. He's got Castillo off to his right. He's got Rodenberger clear far left. Anthony Wilder goes in motion. Him and Rodenberger is going to switch positions here. Clock continues to run, 6.46 and counting. Salina leads 17 to nothing. Ziffel takes the snap, looks across the middle. He's going to step up. He throws across the middle, and he just misses the receiver on that one. Number two, Brady Borton. We've seen Brady make quite a few plays tonight. Yeah, Brady had a big one there in the first half. That's going to stop the clock at 6.37. Oh, I didn't see it. Was there I a did flag? Not, yeah, there is a flag okay. on the play, and I did not see it. And I missed. I he missed. Uh, the ball on the 39 yard line. And pushed the ball back to the 39. Yeah, first and 15. Signal. Yeah. Ziffel's in the gun. He's going to step up. He was going to throw long, but he dancing around the pocket, throws to the left side, and he's got Wilder out there, and Wilder just drops the ball. Anthony Wilder had nobody in front of him and plenty of green grass and just misses the ball. Yeah, that's one of those peekaboos he wanted to take and turn and yeah, burn he, with it, yeah, and he, he didn't have it secure. You're exactly right. He thought about running before he caught the ball. Boy, Ziffel did a really good job with his feet right there, stepping up and stepping around and stepping through. and. Got to bring up second and 15 from the 39. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Brogan Castillo to his left. He's got trips to the left. He's going to throw the ball to the right side. He's got a man out there, and it's incomplete. Brody Boyton, and it's incomplete. Just a little low. That'll bring up a big-time third down, third and 15 from the 39. I didn't call that immediately because, again, it was one of those plays where I couldn't see because of the sight lines. We'll go third and 15 from the 39, 6.25 to go. Zipples in the gun. They're going to fake the handoff to Castillo. He's under heavy pressure. Ziffel's trying to go, and he's going to be taken down. Oh, and Mr. a big-time sack by Caden Merlin. He's Merlin the magician, Gilly. He's been everywhere tonight. Well, and you got to feel for Ziffel right there because he had to see him out of the corner of his eyes. Look, when I become famous and you become famous, Caden Merlin's going to be our bodyguard. I'm telling you. <laughs> he is a heck of a player. he's from the same family, I'm telling you, there was a lot of them that played over here. And they got after it. Football, basketball, Defiance of baseball. <laughs> Punt formation. You can say all the sports, right, Gilly? Yeah. Ziffel with the kick, a low liner off to the right side. They'll let it bounce, and it'll go to about the 20, right about the 21-yard line. So it'll be picked up. So that'll bring up 535 to go, Gilly. This has been a good one. This has been a good defensive battle. It has. And uh, nobody, here's the thing. We've seen no injuries tonight, not a lot of flags. It's been a really well-played game. Clean-played game. Yeah. You know, I mean. Cooler heads have prevailed. I mean, we've seen good sportsmanship from both ball clubs. And that's a tribute to the coaches, you know, doing things the right way, teaching it the right way. Kelly, you believe it's week nine. Next week wraps up the regular season. And we're still having great weather, really are. And you look at the long-term forecast, we can have great weather up till next weekend. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
So Braylon Gabus is in the gun for Salina. He's going to keep it himself. And taken down for not much of a gain there, if any. Puts the clock at 526. Big play there by Robinson also. Stockman. And you got to believe that Defiance having the Salina pinned deep inside the 20, probably going to save those timeouts if they can get a, get a turnover here or a, or a stop on three downs. And that'll bring up second and 12 from the 18. Gabus is in the gun. He's going to let that time clock run down as much as he can there. They'll hand off to Lutz. Lutz goes off the right side. And a nice pickup of about seven yards. John Lutz, boy, he's a bruiser, isn't he, Gilly? He, he really is. runs hard. He does run hard, and he's athletic. And if he gets in the open field, he can really turn it on. Stockman on the stop. They'll bring up second and 12. Clock continues. Excuse me, third and four from the 26-yard line with 4.25 to go. Clock continues to run. Rubio also with Rodenberger in on that last stop for the visiting Defiance Bulldogs. And Defiance needs a stop in the worst way here on third and four. Clock continues to run. Raylan gave us in the gun. And there it is. They jumped, and there's the there. Cadence the, call got him, didn't he it? He was going awful low in his cadence call, and they pulled the uh, pulled the offsides on Defiance. That'll be another Cisco Funeral Home first down. So Defiance got a little eager there and jumped the gun. And that'll set up another first down. Our first down sponsor tonight. Cisco Funeral Homes, dedicated to excellence in service and have the highest integrity. Cisco Funeral Homes are family serving your family in Salina and St. Mary's. Stick around, folks. After the game, we will have the State Bank post-game show. We'll wrap this one up here from Salina. 3.39 to go. Braylon Gabe's running that time clock down as much as he can. He's going to keep it himself as he goes off the right side. He goes across the 30 to the 35 to the 36-yard line. Pick up of about five yards. And Defiance is going to take that time out. They'll take a timeout on the field and take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football. Three seventeen to go in the fourth quarter. Salina leads seventeen and up. And Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Salina High School. Salina trying to get a share of the Western Buckeye League Championship, and they've done enough right now to lead seventeen to nothing. They've got the ball continuing to try to run this clock out. S Defiance has two timeouts left, Gilly, and you got to wonder if they're going to use these right back to back. Braylon Gabe's going to keep it himself. He's going to go through the middle, and Rodenberger hit him, and he's going to pick up a first down. He bounces off Rodenberger and picks up another Cisco Funeral Home first down, and that may do it, partner, because I'm not real sure Defiance is going to use the timeout. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a heck of an athletic play, because I'll tell you what, you know, Rodenberger had to beat on him right there to, to make the play, and he just used his upper body and lower body strength to break away. And Rodenberger is a good-sized kid, and nice play by that young man to turn as many yards as he could. But I'm like you. That's a first down that Defiance needed to stop right there and not, not give them a first down opportunity. First and 10 from the 45, gave us in the gun. you got to believe they're going to keep it on the ground. This is Lutz as he goes across the 45. And there's a flag coming in. That's going to be a hold thrown right at the line of scrimmage, i got to believe. Let's see what they call on that one. Could be a block below the waist, and that's what it is, against Defiance. Illegal block against the defense. Illegal block against the defense. And that's hard to do. We'll bring up. Ball spotted on the 37-yard line, first down. The only thing I can think of is 
They're calling that a chop block because yeah, I, they're going after the knee area. Yeah, it could be. You're right, Gilly. I didn't see the play. I didn't either. Yeah. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 37, 220 to go. You gotta believe Salinas is gonna keep it here. They've got Lutz off to the right of Gabus. Down to 201. Under the two minute mark now. Gabus with a low snap. And <laughs> Lutz is hit hard there. And he was met in the oh, hole. A nice play. Mr. Ayazari. Ayazari. Andrew Ayazari with a nice hit there. Yeah, you can hear the patch cracking up here. Yeah, Salina was fortunate that ball didn't stay on the turf. So, partner, you, you look at the season that Defiance has had, and they have scored 38, 16, 30, 43, 30, 46, 19, and 28. Tonight, they were shut out. That's but unbelievable. You know, but you know what? Something positive is going to come out of this. Start. Oh, sure, They've sure, already sure. secured a spot in the playoffs, so sure. we can talk about that in postgame. But, yeah, they put a lot of points on the board, but they knew coming in it was going to be a chess match and who was going to make the big plays. There goes Braylon Gabus as he gets around the right side, and he's a smart play, Gilly, as he takes a knee right before the goal line, does not score. And that, that's pretty impressive. How big of a, a football move. IQ move is that? Yep, he knew that if he goes into the end zone, the clock stops. But he also knows if he takes a knee, this game's virtually over. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that, that's a heady play by that young man. And the clock continues to run at 46, 45. And Salina, or excuse me, Defiance is not going to stop the clock here. And they will take a knee. Braylon Gabus takes the knee. And that will be the last play of the game. Clock continues to run at 29. Salina does not have to take another snap. So we come down to Salina High School. The Salina Bulldogs defeat the Defiance Bulldogs 17 to nothing and they win a share of the Western Buckeye League title. Next week, Gilly, they go to Wapakoneta for a chance at an outright title. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a heck of a battle between the Redskins and the Salina Bulldogs down at Wapak, a beautiful facility. They're going to be playing on field turf. And you and I will be there. We're going to be there. <laughs> and you know what? Both of these ball clubs tonight, this is a heck of a film that they could set and break down. We, we, we just talked about this. Both teams are secure in the playoffs. When we they're, come, they're both in. Yep, absolutely. When we come back, we'll wrap this one up with, a, with our State Bank and Game, excuse me, our State Bank post game show. Get that one out. We come back right after these messages. Welcome back to the Salina High School for our State Bank post-game show. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So the Salina Bulldogs, Gilly, get a big 17 to nothing win. They get a share of the WBL title. A great job by that team. Yeah, congratulations to them. You know, they've got one more, you know, task at hand, and that's down at Walpaw Canetta. It's going to be a heck of a WBL matchup. Both teams are in. Defiance is in the playoffs also. You know, a lot of things can be taken from this experience for Defiance. Uh, basically, the game, two things, in my opinion, changed the game was, number one, Salina pounded the football at Defiance, which opened up some creases and seams, sure. and then they set it up with the vertical pass. You know, both touchdowns were scored off of vertical passes, and, uh, you know, that was the difference in the game. But I think physically... You know, towards the end of the game, I think it took its toll on defiance by Salina's ability to run the football and, and, and play power football behind those five offensive linemen. And Gilly, defiance is going to fall to 6-3, and 5-3 three, and three in the WBL. All their losses are league losses. They're going to make the playoffs. This is a good team that it's ran a into a dangerous team. Yeah, that ran into a really good team. Absolutely. Both of these teams are dangerous. You know, and, and, and even next week, Wapak is a dangerous WBL team. I would not want to play any one of these three teams in the first round of the 
OHSA playoffs. And that'll wrap it up from Salina High School. 17 to nothing, the Salina Bulldogs defeat the Defiance Bulldogs 17 to nothing. For Darren Gilbert, our entire WSM crew, saying we'll see you next week in Wapakoneta. <laughs>